today's scripture reading is in chap no, not chap. It's in John, chapter eight, verses thirty-one through thirty-eight. Okay. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, "If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free." They answered him. We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. I know that you are offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my words find no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. Thank you, Tim. It's good to see everybody. You finally got to wear your coat, didn't you? (laughs) All one day of the year. Uh, Lots of great things going on here. Uh, Bible Bowls this coming weekend, so if Brad looks nervous, it's because he is. Uh, He still has to find places for people to go. He's looking for a few more helpers. He said on Wednesday he needed 35 places. He told me right before church he still needs 20 places for kids who have already signed up to be able to stay. And so if you have an extra place, please see Brad. He would... Uh, love to be able to uh, not have 20 kids sleeping on his couch. So uh, be sure you check with Brad and, and see what all the needs are there. We've been talking a lot about uh, our theme for this year, about sharing Jesus, about that we're to be able to seek Jesus, find Jesus, and share Jesus. And so today we want to talk a little bit about finding Jesus in truth. And you would think that truth would be an easy thing. Uh, I'm going to try not to complicate it more than what it already is. Truth ought to be just, well, you said something correctly. But that's not really what truth is. In fact, as you look at what the passage is for us today, we realize that Jesus is talking about a lot more. Because he says when truth comes, it brings freedom. Now, that's a lot more of, of truth than what we thought. Um, he has been arguing with the Pharisees. He's been talking about God. And, and basically, he's saying, your truth isn't very real. Uh, you're just not listening and understanding. And so here he talks about disciples who abide in his word, who follow what God has said and what he has said. And then they will be true disciples And those disciples will find this kind of truth and this kind of freedom. He says you will know the truth. You'll know the truth about God. You'll know the truth about yourself. I think that's one we have a hard time facing sometimes. And then also, that truth is going to set you free. We quote that a lot. We say that on signs a lot. But truth setting us free, that's a whole other thing. Most of the time, truth condemns us. The truth is you were speeding. The truth is you got caught. The truth is, and a lot of times that's what happens to us when we start talking about truth. So how do we find a kind of truth that sets us free? (coughs) I've still got some of that tickle left. Um, I think there are three paths that sometimes we talk about that come to freedom. First is justice. That's usually what we think about. And that's the concept that we have in the very beginning. And so it's the idea that you do what's right. You do everything that's right. You follow the law. You do what the law says. The second one is the con. Now, maybe we don't think of that as being true, but I think that people act that way. 
as if that's what's really true. And people promise more than they can deliver. People try to get away with things. They try to take a shortcut. They try to do something a different way. The deal is always better than what the truth is able to be. And so there's a con. It says, well, maybe I'll get away with it this time. Maybe I'll get away with it. Maybe I'll find a better deal. And then there's Jesus. And he's the only one that sets you free, really. But I want to look at those three different things in light of some of the scriptures that we have. And so the first one I want to look at is justice. Some people feel like truth is injustice. I mean, if you keep the law, the truth is you just follow what the law says. You do everything you're supposed to do, and then you're going to be okay. And that should be right. That ought to be correct. That as long as you follow all the rules and don't break any and do everything, there shouldn't be any punishment. There shouldn't be anything that goes wrong. Because freedom is found in keeping the law. Because you don't get punished when you're trying to keep the law. Obedience. Being perfect. But if you can't be perfect, well then you're probably going to get punished somewhere in there. Uh, because the law has, you know, you need to do everything right. The only trouble is it's a system that can be manipulated, manipulated because it doesn't work for Jesus. Turn with me to John chapter 18, and I think you're going to see all three of these things come together. You see, Jesus is innocent, but the scribes and Pharisees have decided they want to put him to death. They use the law to do it. He's innocent, and yet the people lie with their accusations, and the accusations stick. The system can be corrupt. It can be something that does not work for you, and there is no freedom in that justice for Jesus. Jesus is in a discussion with Pilate at his trial in John chapter 18. And it says, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. And Pilate said to him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born and to this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate said to him, what is truth? And he, as he said this, after he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man to you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, no, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. And so Pilate is trying to find truth between all of the people who are talking to him. Here he's got the Jews on one hand dragging Jesus into the court and saying, you know, you need to punish him. He's upsetting the whole nation. He's saying things that are not correct. He's blaspheming and we don't have the death penalty without the Romans being involved. And so we need this death penalty for this crime that he has committed. Justice isn't working for him. Pilate tries to find something wrong with him. He can't find anything wrong with him. He asks him all the questions. He can't find anything wrong with him. Jesus says, I came to bear witness to the truth. Well, Pilate's kind of stumped at this stage. He's seen how the Pharisees and the scribes and the chief priests are because they're accusing him. That's the court system. And it's not working. It's not working for Jesus especially. So where is truth in that? It's just not happening for him. Here he's got Jesus. He's an innocent man. And then he's got Barabbas. Barabbas is a robber. Barabbas is the con. He's the guy who gets away with things. He's the guy who slipped through all the way. You know, he's the one who's just on the shady side of things. He's the one who uh, takes whatever he wants, and he finds his own justice. So he's not trying to do everything right. In fact, he's not got any intention to, uh, to do everything right. His only intention is to never get caught. And I think some people want to do it that way. 
Sometimes it works. You get away with it, right? You never get caught. But we see from this that he's already stolen some things. It calls him a robber, which means he's taken them from some people, not just a thief. Uh, Luke 23, 18 and 19, it gives you a little bit more. It says they were crying out to not release Jesus, but they all cried out together, away with this man and release to us Barabbas. A man who has been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city and for murder. So it gives you a little bit more of what Barabbas is about. Barabbas is the murderer. Barabbas is the one who has done insurrection. What is insurrection? That's one of those words that you just go, huh? It's for the violent overthrow of the government. That's what insurrection is. Basically, he's a terrorist. He's the one who is there to plant the bomb. He's the one there who is to murder all the officials. He's the one who's the sniper. He's the one who's the terrorist. And so, who would they rather release? The Son of God, King of the Jews, or a terrorist? Well, where is truth in all of this? They say, well, let us, you know, release Barabbas. We want Barabbas. We want Jesus crucified. How do you do that? How does that happen? Where is truth in all of that? No wonder Barabbas decided that's the best lifestyle for me. (coughs) But that's where he comes to because he's the guy who is getting away with it. And so much of the time, that's where we are. This is the real life example because we think we can get away with it. Everybody else will get caught, but not us. We know better. We know how to do this. We've gotten away with it so far, and so we're going to get away with it now. Jesus is the one taking the place of Barabbas. But it isn't that Jesus is dying for his sin because there's no repentance. There's no change. Jesus died for his physical life, but no sins were forgiven there. Sure, he didn't die physically, but Jesus just takes his place and Barabbas walks away free. And so many people want that kind of, that kind of freedom, that kind of truth. Let me see if I can't just pull it over on somebody. Let me see if I can't just say the way. It's the old confidence game that we can say, well, people don't really know what's going on. We see the con all the time. We run into people who are trying to say whatever they can just to get a result. Say whatever they can just to get ahead. They're trying to make an impression. Nothing about them is very real or very honest because everything is just designed around getting ahead. And there is no truth. There is no real freedom. They just hope they get away with it all. Just like Barabbas, right? He got away with it. Well... Until his suicide, and when he couldn't live with himself. I'm not sure that's really getting away with it. There's no real freedom in that. There's a change in how we view the world. And we try to do this all the time. We come up with different ways, with different things that we're going to do. The first one is violence. And so I'm right because I have a bigger gun than anybody else. And you see people going in and taking over schools and taking over a place that says, I have the right. I can be powerful and nobody else can come and get me. Of course, it doesn't last very long. There's always somebody with a bigger gun. We want to control our world by shooting the people we don't like, by hate crimes, by doing away with things. And if you just look around, you're going to see that's the way some people have their world. The truth is, for them, I control the world by violence. And they have accepted that as a truth. Another one is evolution. It's a theory that works on a limited basis, but it 
doesn't really work for the way it gets applied. It's not an explanation of where we came from. And yet some people who don't want to follow God's rules and God's way say, well, <coughs> excuse me. Some people want to say it's more about survival of the fittest. That's what evolution is. Whoever does the most, whoever has the most, whoever survives is the best way. That used to be good. I no longer think I am the fittest. How about you? Are you the fittest now? Are you in that place where you can say, well, I would be the one to survive. You know, the theory works great as long as you're the one on top. Otherwise, it just says, you know, I am food. <laughs> and it's not going to work so well. And I'm no longer the fittest, so the truth is I have planned my own demise. And so I'm not sure that's really a good truth to base your life on. The third one is relative truth. We're told that all truth is relative. There's no absolute truth. What's true for me is true for me, and what's true for you is very different. That can be true for you, and we don't have to have that, except for it really goes anywhere, does it? There's no freedom found with that. As long as I see myself as being better than you, then I'm okay. Everything's good because I'm better than you. And so my truth is, I'm not the worst. That's really something to look forward to. That only makes you okay with yourself. It really doesn't make the rest good. There is no freedom. And you may not be accepted by other people with what you think. And then there's Jesus, the one full of grace and truth. Look at, first, at John chapter 1 and verse 14. It says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. And so as you look at John as he tries to introduce this whole concept, he talks about him being the Word and being able to come. And that he's full of grace and truth. And we look at that and we understand and we realize that that's what that's all about. That here is Jesus who's come. He, we have seen his glory. We have seen who he is. He's full of this grace and truth. And that's where grace and truth come from. They came because he brought it into this world. Grace and truth came through Jesus because he's the one that modeled that. I'm not sure we really get grace and truth by reading a book. We get it when we see it applied to other people. And we see that that's the way it's supposed to work. And we see that that's how it's all going to be. We need that grace and truth. His word is both. That's where he comes together. That's the place where he exists. Because he is that. And we know the truth. The truth about God. We also know the truth about ourselves. Sometimes that's not so good. But the thing that really makes the difference is we are able to see what God can make of us as truth. And that's what really matters, is how God can empower us to live through Jesus Christ, how he empowers us to be through him. What an incredible thing it is that he is able to do there. In 1 John chapter 1, he says, This is the message that we have heard from him and proclaim to you. That God is light, and, him in, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, 
we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. See, truth is all the way through the Bible. It talks about God as being a God of truth. It talks about Jesus as being truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And he talks here especially about us. And that when we walk in darkness, when we do things we're not supposed to do and claim, oh, but, but we're, we're Christians, we're good people. He says, if, if you do that, that's a lie. We do not practice the truth. He says, in order to be people who are truth, he says, you have to be able to practice the truth. You have to do those things that are true. You have to do those things that are honest, those things that are real. And that's what you're going to be able to see in people who are like Jesus. Because I think Jesus is honest above everything else. And that's what it is really about, is that we are able to have this relationship with God he talks about this as making a covenant so that we walk in the light and that we have this blood of Jesus who cleanses us from all sin. We understand the way that blood gets applied to us is when we repent of our sins and we're baptized into Christ. It's not an accident. It's not a prayer. It's when we're baptized into Christ, we put on Christ and that blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And we need to be able to practice this truth. We need to be able to show this truth. He says, if you say you don't have any sin, we know better. God knows better. And so it's not just a matter of saying, well, I've been perfect, which is what the law would demand, right? I don't think you're going to be able to out-con God because he's always going to know what's going on. The only way is through Jesus Christ. He's the one that makes all the difference. And so it is that confession of sin and we will be forgiven. It is that honesty before God and that not hiding anything but saying my life is open and my life is honest. And we become that truth. So let me just ask you today, is what people see in your life, is that truth? Or are you still trying to impress them? Still trying to show them, oh, I'm, I'm better than that, I'm... Are we always trying to impress people or are we trying to say, you know, this is who I am. This is what I have. And this is all that I do. We're always trying to make people think we're stronger or better or prettier or something. Always trying to impress them. But he says, what about just being yourself? Just being who you are. What do you say about yourself that, that is not an exaggeration? What do you say about others that is not putting them down so that you'll look better? It's just being honest about it. Because God loves you, God cares for you, and there are some really beautiful, good things that you're able to say. And that's where God brings us to. Because he says you've been forgiven. He says here's the path. Here's what all you're able to do in all of these things. I saw this. It says, we all need to know what it means to be honest. Honesty is more than not lying. It is truth-telling, truth-speaking, truth-living, and truth-loving. It's, it's all of your life. It's what Jesus did. And I think it's what drew people to Jesus because he wasn't a person who exaggerated everything. He wasn't a person who just did miracles. He was a person who just lived out everything that was true. And I think that's what draws people in. Can we just be honest? This is who I am. I don't have to pretend to be somebody better. I get to, I get to not pretend. I get to have an actual reality that God has forgiven me of all of my sins. And I'm able to live my life as if, not that I didn't sin, but as if God has forgiven me. And so then we can speak truth into this world. 
And we can live truth the same way Jesus did. Maybe today you're trying to hide. Maybe it's the con. Maybe you have to be perfect. Let me suggest Jesus is such a better way. Just follow him and do the things that he wants. If we're able to help you do that. Whether you need to be baptized into Christ or whether you need to just say, I need to start over again. Would you come while we stand and sing?